As far as we can tell, all power's been cut off everywhere. All communications are out. Telephones, radio, cable, everything. Oh, Eleanor, did you call the electrician? I tried, Mr. Bleeker, but the phone doesn't work either. Well, call the phone company. But the phone doesn't work. Cactus. 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 I am playing games. Cactus. 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 Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus. 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 This cocksucker. Cactus. 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 You've got to be crap on my ball. Cactus. 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 It's gonna be a fuck job to edit. Cactus. 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 You're calling me a hobo. Cactus. 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 Roy the retarded boy. Cactus. 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 How about if I come down and punch your head off? Cactus. 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 You blowing smoke up my ass. Cactus. 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 You think a tracer can stop me? <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Roy, and you're listening to the Snowplow Show for Monday, February 15th, 2016. And today's show is sponsored by Utah Kurt, who I just learned recently that Utah Kurt is the one that sent me a DVD of That Awkward Moment with Zac Efron. That was sent to me, uh, I guess, kind of anonymously a couple years ago for some reason related to this show. And Utah Kurt finally came clean. So thanks, Utah Kurt. The mystery's finally over. I've been losing sleep over that. Today's show is going to contain some stuff that we did Saturday night on a live show. And I'm sure some other things because that's not a very long segment. But first, we have to do some updates. And update number one involves the double clicks. Uh, I guess it was yesterday, or was it Saturday? I don't remember. But I started getting all of these retweets from the double clicks who mentioned me on Twitter. And the tweet said, Okay, nerds, get your favorite pants on. Double Clicks Live starts now with guest R. Molina and some talk of phone losers. And then there was a link to their YouTube live streaming thing. And I was out at the time. I couldn't really listen live. I mean, I tried once or twice, but their sound was too low for me. But luckily, as soon as I got home, Kuraz had a private message up on my screen that's like, Hey, here's the link to the double clicks thing. And it starts at exactly 35 minutes in. And here's what the double clicks had to say about PLA. Um, there's something I wanted to talk about real quick, because I feel like we've talked about it before, maybe. Um, but as I was thinking back on all of the stuff that's happened over the past five years, and just sort of like reading Craig Steffen, who I think is probably the double clicks best biographer, he knows everything about us, did not know that we had a Stalker. song out called Technical Writer, which was on our first album, which is out of print. It was called Beta Testing 123. And it's true. We have a song called Technical Writer, which I always thought... I don't know. It w- we've have a lot of songs, you guys. Yeah. Um, but this song, Technical Writer, which is about a technical writer and obviously is about a lot of other things deep in my recesses of my mind that I have opinions about. This song was taken and put in the background of a show called Phone Losers of America, which is a prank call show and something about cactuses is involved. I don't know. I've listened to the show a little bit and it wasn't my thing and it was also just really weird because it's like this whole other world. But those people are really, really obsessed with this one song of ours. It's the only one they know, and sometimes they'll come to our shows and request this song. I have no idea what's happening, and therefore it makes me mildly uncomfortable. (laughs) I'm just like, am I being made fun of? Is this... Are they making fun? Of, like, what is happening, really? And I feel like everybody, you can be in that situation a lot where, like, people, it seems like they like you, but also it seems like they're making fun of you. <sighs> Come on. Um, we, we would not make fun of the double clicks. The double clicks are awesome. Okay, sorry. I'm going to stop interrupting. But, yeah, so we're going to play that song now um, because it was requested by a guy named David um, in the chat or in the... Uh, on the Facebook thing. But it's also just really funny to think about like all the different ways people have found our band. Yeah. Over the years. Um, like we did, we've done a bunch of like random podcast theme songs. And, um, we actually just wrote a theme song for a show called future girl, which is going to be out soon on Amy Dallin's channel. She's got previews. You should Google it. It's really funny. Um, we just do a bunch of random stuff. Uh, that D and D song we just played was on the Dungeons and Dragons podcast, which is one of the first, like placements we ever got and it was like what that's awesome also sorry for all the f-bombs um (laughs) (laughs) it's just weird uh because i never know what's happening and i just assume that it's all going to fall apart uh but anyway here's a song called technical writer (laughs) yeah anyway so so i'm gonna play the entire technical writer song i mean they're performing it live for i guess fans of pla basically 
So I'm going to steal this from their live stream, and I'm playing the entire thing right now in the introduction, and you guys will enjoy it, and you won't complain that I'm playing a full song in the intro. Yeah, well, like, that's the thing. People ask us, like, well, did you ever expect this to be, like, your full-time job, or that you would be playing, like, at a big show like PAX or something? And it's like, no, I have no idea what's happening, and I still don't know what's happening, and I don't know how I got here. <laughs> um, but somebody heard our song on a prank phone call show, and now this is my job, so... <laughs> Oh, they're blaming us for having careers. That's awesome. I guess it's good. Ah, uh, <laughs> maybe. Um, anyway, in this song, I have a son, which some people think I have in real life, but I don't. <laughs> that was just what this song was. this song and i just i like it too i just don't know why none okay. of us do yep. <gasps> what is it <laughs> But for some reason, I turned that song into a loop, which you're hearing right now, about five or six years ago, and I've used it on many shows since then. And for some reason, that makes fans of the phone losers go to double-click shows and request Technical Rider, and makes them both uncomfortable, which is the best part. So thanks, guys, for doing that. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to the entire video of this double-clicks show, the live stream thing that they did. It's a little over an hour long, and the Technical Rider stuff starts right at 35 minutes. Another important update for today's show is that uh, you remember that podcast, it's called Reply All, and they interviewed me and then they interviewed Mistress Morgan about the uh, the Comcast pranks that were happening, which was completely Mistress Morgan's fault, not my fault. Uh, they did, uh, I, I'm still a listener of their show, I've listened to every single episode they've ever done, and recently they did an episode on the same thing that I talked about, which was those people who were, um, like, uh, the cell phone tracking apps were sending everyone to their house instead of where their cell phones actually were. You know, all these people are showing up at their house in the middle of the night and saying, hey, you have my cell phone here at your house. I know you do because my tracking app shows that you do, but they didn't. So PJ and What's-His-Face from the Reply All podcast, they went to their house and they interviewed them, and they brought in an expert to uh, tell them what he thinks the problem is and they may or may have not solved the mystery of these people's house but who cares it doesn't matter it was entertaining to listen to and i think you should all listen to this episode because it's a bunch of weird phone shit happening and that's the kind of stuff we're into right so visit the show notes on phonelosers.org or on the youtube video and there's a direct link to this episode of reply all which is a really good episode if you're into weird cell phone shit like i am I have one last announcement before we get started on uh, Saturday night's live show. And that's just kind of an update on the Prank Call Nation hosts. I've been wanting to mention this for a while. But I think a lot of people don't know where to get their prank calls from since Prank Call Nation sort of, but not quite, died. But not really, because Dwight is still using the Prank Call Nation Mixler machine. And so is Laugh Track Matt and Zax. They do their show every Monday. So you can still find them on Mixler.com slash Prank Call Nation. And I was on the Party Time show last week with Laugh Track Matt and Zax. And it looks like the shows on the Prank Call Nation Mixler, they're still disappearing and they're still being turned into podcast feeds on PrankCallNation.com. So even though PCN's dead, it still seems pretty active. Uh, Neon, she's doing her show on Mixler now, on her own Mixler. I mean, not Prank Call Nation's Mixler. She's at Mixler.com slash Neon Like Bajork. 
and she has a show reel. And I see here that she did a show on January 29th, so she's still doing shows. And I'll put a link in the show notes to her show reel so you guys can check her out. And of course, she's on her website too, 976neon.com. Giad is not doing a live show anymore. He officially quit so that he could concentrate on the Calls of Mass Confusion video based prank show. And I don't know where you can find past episodes of The Art of Phone Larking. Maybe those are still on prankcallnation.com. I'm not really sure. But those are fun to listen to. They're old episodes. If you want to go listen to those, I'll try and find them and put a link in the show notes. But the important thing with Giad is to go listen to Calls of Mass Confusion, which is on YouTube and I think Facebook. And there might even be a website. And in the latest episode, I am snorting cocaine, which I usually don't do on camera. But I figured, you know, for Calls of Mass Confusion, I'll do anything. So there's a link to all of that in the show notes. Uh, Mr. Smorgan, what the hell happened to you? I don't know where you are. I haven't heard from you in a long time. And I can't seem to find... Did you ever have a page on Facebook for your shows? Because I can't find it. So I don't know what the hell is going on with Mistress Morgan. Hopefully she's still alive. If you're out there, Mistress Morgan, let me know you're still alive. And tell me if there's a link to any of your shows or whatever. And everyone seems really concerned about Carlito in the comments on my shows lately. He's still alive and I still talk to him occasionally. The last I heard, he's going to start doing pre-recorded shows instead of live shows. And he still needs to release the show that me and him did on New Year's Eve. Or was that Christmas Eve? I don't remember. But anyway, I'm sure he'll put that up eventually on his website on madhouselive.com. But Carlito is still around. I'm sure he'll be back soon. He's taken many long vacations from his shows and he always comes back. So, you know, he's taking a break. He'll be back. We'll always have Carlito. I'm sure of that, even if he's not. Go visit madhouselive.com and just keep an eye on that site for future updates. And did I forget any hosts? I mean, Trainwreck, he disappeared like a year before PCN disappeared. And I think Global Chaos Radio, he also disappeared before PCN disappeared. He has his own Mixler, I think, at mixler.com slash global chaos radio. So that's my update on Prank Call Nation hosts. I hope that helps all of you who've been looking for the hosts and have been asking me questions in my comments and stuff. And I think that's enough for the updates. This has gone on long enough. So let's get started with Saturday night's show. This is a very short segment. I think I edited it down to about 18 minutes. It was originally two hours long on Saturday night, but not a whole lot of people were answering. And we were just having bad luck this night, probably because we were somewhat intoxicated. So here's 18 minutes of Saturday night's live YouTube stream starring me and my favorite hooker, Sunshine. We're going to do pizza heaven, you guys. Pizza heaven. That's what we're doing. There's this guy. uh, He emailed this to me. He says he used to work there. But I probably shouldn't give the details of his employment that he gave me, because then you'll start posting things about him. But we're going to call... I mean, we're going to uh, post on Pizza Haven. Pizza Heaven. Uh, Is it Haven or Heaven? Who knows? Pizza Heaven. It's Pizza (laughs) Heaven. And I just posted the link in the chat room. Pizza Heaven Luzerny or something. L-U-Z-E-R-N-E. So, you know, if you leave reviews, please, five stars, don't be a jerk. A dead link, it's not a dead link. Oh, yeah, yeah, leave leave wacky comments on the pizza thing, on the pizza page, just, you know, like, not not mean wacky, more like hilarious wacky, something that might perhaps make sunshine giggle. (laughs) I should probably turn my microphone off. (laughs) Okay. Nobody's answering anyway. I thought these would answer at nighttime. Damn it. Just because it's one in the morning. Hello, Phyllis? Phyllis, did you pick up? It just kind of got quiet. It stopped ringing. It's almost as if Phyllis picked up. Now she's not talking to me. Phyllis? Hello? Come on, Phyllis. You can do it. Say hello. Do it, Phyllis. Come on. You've done it before. We have faith in you. Oh, I hear background noise. Phyllis is just listening. Or maybe she just picked the phone up and set it on the nightstand. Have you called her before? No. I hear noises. Do you hear noises? Yeah. Phyllis, are you okay? Hello? Phyllis, Co- are you all right? Cough once for Yes. Twice for no. Phyllis. I can kind of hear her talking. Well, I think we hear the TV in the background. No. 
Phyllis? I can hear you breathing. Are you okay? Phyllis, have you almost finished? Uh Oh, God. (laughs) Phyllis? Phyllis, do you need help? Do you need us to call someone for you? Oh, wake up. (laughs) My God, girl. You are a heavy sleeper. Have you ever been told that? Uh, four children today, I'm exhausted. You what? I'm sorry? Four what? I have four children today, and I'm exhausted. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking kids. They'll do it to you every time. <laughs> I just I just tell them to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Did you know I think it's, a st- it's, it's actually a lot. If you put them in a closet, as long as there's a light in there, you can consider that a playroom. <laughs> <laughs> As long as there's at least at least one square foot. Oh my god! <laughs> they don't have to move. They're like veal. They don't have to move much. Just you know enough. Uh, well, uh, who is this? You know, like 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 caged chickens. <laughs> caged chickens. I like those I'm a hipster. I kind of like that free range shit. So you know. Yeah. Anyway, Phyllis, uh, we're call- <laughs> we're calling from the shoe store. Uh, you ordered some oh, shoes okay. from us. Yeah. Yeah. There's a problem. What? The tracking device in the shoe it stopped transmitting. So did you did you disable the tracking device in the shoe? I don't know anything about a tracking device in it. Oh, yeah, in the shoes that we sold you, there's a tracking device. So we can see everywhere you go and, and log it. It's a lot like, you know, on Facebook lately, where if you search something, they put ads to the side. It's a way that we track how, well, you know, the places that our customers go. So we know how to better service them. And also we sell... Okay, this is a joke, right? No, no, it's not a joke, no. And we also no. sell it to the Chinese government. You can't imagine how embarrassing it is when we look at, you know, the places everyone has gone. And let me tell you how many men have been <clears throat> to the adult shop. It's crazy. It's insane. There's a lot of horny men in your area. That's all I'm saying. Your history looks looks okay from what I can see here, though. You're a godly woman, Phyllis. Uh... Either I'm dreaming or this is a joke. It's like, what, two o'clock in the morning? What what would make you think you're dreaming? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because y'all are crazy, isn't it? (laughs) Phyllis, we love you. (laughs) You're awesome. I hope you get tons of rest and you can put up with all the little bitches tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, this has been fun. Well, Phyllis, so I have we, to go to bed. Okay, Good we do. Night, sweetheart. Can, we do need you to do a hard reset on those shoes, though. Yeah, just throw them against the wall really hard. That should do it. Yes. <laughs> or or cl- try click the heels three times. That'll, um, that'll do. Those shoes were a gift for a child. Okay. Oh, have the child click click their heels three times. <laughs> or just have the children throw the shoes at each other. Well, I'm sure they'll do that eventually. Anyway. So <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay. Good night, Phyllis. Good night. Okay, good night. Sweet dreams. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I like Phyllis. <laughs> I'm going to save her number, you know, just when I need someone to talk to. <laughs> she seemed pretty funny. I like her. <laughs> someone laced the shoes. Oh, did I did I tell you the second part of that joke? No, you didn't. You only told me the first. <laughs> <laughs> and as if that wasn't great enough, someone on the YouTube comments was like, um, they're like, yeah, she's got to watch out for lace shoes. She might start tripping. <laughs> <laughs> the worst puns ever. <laughs> Oh, uh, did they remove? The- oh, yeah. So the last show I did, mm-hmm. we mobbed a Facebook, you know, posted a bunch of crazy stuff. Is that stuff. the one that you showed me tonight? The Australian vaccination people, uh, anti-vaxxers. No, I don't or think something? it was that one. It was okay. it was the one before that or after that or something. But their Facebook page is gone. They took it down. No way. Because of our crazy comments. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second time that's happened. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, tonight we're doing here. Let me find the Facebook. They want they want you to do a dream survey. Dream <laughs> survey. Well, if anyone if anyone um, does, uh, 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 you know, what am I trying to say? If if we do wake them up, we definitely should do that. <laughs> I like that one. And you, uh, the shoes are ugly and can no longer be sold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, we're g- we're going to do that. That is pretty good. <laughs> All right. So um, on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash pizza heaven Luzerne. Luz- it's from Luzerne, Pennsylvania. L-U-Z-E-R-N-E. So pizza heaven Luzerne. You know, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Henry. Oh, I was just going to say the comment on the latest post. Uh, someone named John Connor says happy valentine's day the owner of this establishment kicked me out and said go back to mexico and fillet a cactus <laughs> that's on their their public page right now so if you'd like to go and leave a crazy comment you can do that if you want that's true you should go leave some leave some comments on uh under my leash on way page sure <laughs> Okay, which okay, busy signal. Oh, yeah, this one we had a busy signal. Like it's the 80s or something. The other day when I called. Apparently that city name is French. Sorry, Adam. I'm very uncultured. Hello, Kadisha? Yes. Hey, Kadisha. This is Roy from the shoe store. You got some shoes from us? Uh-huh. And I just, there was a small problem with the shoes I needed to let you know about. Uh-huh. Uh, those shoes have been recalled. There's been a, a recall issued on those shoes because they're too ugly. Okay. So you're going to want to bring those back. They're definitely, definitely too ugly. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, okay. So you understand, right? You need to bring those back. They're too ugly. Uh-huh. They're ugly shoes, ma'am. Okay. Don't. Hey, this is not a laughing. <laughs> <laughs> now watch. I bet if I told her coming from another woman, all hell would break loose. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's different when men say our shoes are ugly. Another girl pointed out. Holy shit. <laughs> that is that is some fighting I, I, words right there. I love how she sounded like she's <laughs> laughing at the very end. Yeah. I'm not even going to call her back because that was great. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to leave it at her cracking up and hanging up the phone. That's funny. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is Steven. Is this Kathy? This is Steven from the shoe store? Yes. All right. And um, we just have kind of a small problem. We need you, if you come back in here, we need you to stop giving the cashier the stink eye when you're refunding your shoes and stuff. Okay, Kathy? I don't understand. Oh, Kyle. No, I'm, I'm saying that if you come in here again... Don't give the cashier the stink eye, because it's rude. Um, this call in the middle of the night is rude. Well, you deserve it, because you're giving the cashier the stink eye. And you can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be nice. No more stink eye in our store, ma'am. Yes, sir, and I think I will uh, call your store and turn in this. Oh, my supervisor's right here if you want to talk to her. Hi, this is Miss Jenkins, and who am I speaking with? This is no time for a phone call. Well, it's no time to walk into our store and give our cashiers a dirty a dirty look. You made this poor person feel... Excuse me? <laughs> you weren't finished. You need. To- I was not finished. Hello? Hi, how's it going? Oh, what do you need? Well, what I need is for our customers to walk in respectfully to our store and be kind to our cashiers. That's what I need. Well, it's um 2:02 right now, mm-hmm. so Thank you. 2:02 in the morning? Right. Okay. I understand that. So your point is? My point is our cashiers have been instructed that if anybody walks to the doors and give them the stink eye again, they have our permission to cast the devil out of anybody that walks in and gives them shit. This is a godly place. We're not just selling shoes. We're selling the gospel. Okay. What is this, like a prank call? (laughs) 
What? As if. <laughs> this girl is like saying that if we don't walk in the store or something, that devil is going to be within us or some some prank call. No, not call number. I'm calling police. Sir, it's not a prank call. This is store policy. And and I've yeah. got like a direct line to God, so don't that, uh, please store don't store policy me. copy. Excuse me? Yeah, you can come in and get it anytime you want. Yes. As long no, I'd as, rather not come in. As long, as long as you don't give us the stink eye when you get here. Yes. I might do that. Well, they're biblically trained cashiers, and they know how to cast out devils, and I'm telling you. All right, so what right. happens when I call the police on y'all? Well, we'll cast the devil out of you for that, too. You'll cast the devil out of me? Yes, That's sir. right. <laughs> y'all are funny. We have scriptures, in man. In the name of Jesus, I come... <laughs> Devil, get out. In the name of Jesus, what? No, oh, don't make her finish. You don't want to make her finish. He's gone. I, he wants me to finish. I bet he does. Oh, by the way, that... Leave a message after the tone. I almost forgot. There's a guy in the chat room. His name is It's Barbs. And right. he's the one that said we should um, yell at them about the stink eye thing. So oh, that really? last call was all his fault. <laughs> Hi, I was calling for Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. Yes. This is Steven from the shoe store. You got some shoes here from us? Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yolanda? Yes. This is Steven from the shoe store. Uh Uh-huh. And you picked up some shoes from us the other day? Yes. And there's a problem with them. What's wrong with them? Uh, they've been recalled. There's a. They've issued a corporate recall on them, all across the country. Are you calling here at this time of morning for shoes? Yeah, there, there's a recall on them. It turns out that they're too ugly. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, I'm gonna call Kathy back. Kathy, oh, the one with the God. Yes, I don't. I, I think this is. What's her name, Kathy? Hello. Hello, this is God. I understand you've been giving people the stink eye. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to. Okay. It's a computer. It's not even a fax. It's like they're on dial-up Your modem call or has been still. forwarded to an auto. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded. We, just, we, we just kicked her son offline, I think. <laughs> Your call has been fo- Your call has been forwarded oh, to an. Shit. Is that their number that you're trying again? Yeah. yeah Your I'm call has Kathy. been forwarded to an auto. <sighs> All right. That was fun. That was. I just I'm really surprised that more people didn't pick up. I guess I should just delete this entire list. All right, let's go to facebook.com slash pizza heaven luzerne, which uh, someone in the chat room tells me is French. Someone named Lee Shumway says, fuck you, pizza heaven. I ordered a pizza for my lover and you called my home to confirm the order. My husband answered the damn phone. Get what I want for Valentine's Day. Try happy divorce day. Fuck you. Jared says, nothing says happy Valentine's Day like a car- like a cold cardboard pizza that started a, gr- a grease fire in my <laughs> oven when I tried to warm it up. However, the rock hard pizza <laughs> makes a much better frisbee than most others, so I'll give you credit there. Four out of ten. <laughs> oh, we got to read the reviews, too. This is going to take forever. Uh, it's not their fault. The Environmental Protection Act of 2004 says all pizza must reuse boxes which are cleaned with flammable chemicals. This is common sense. <laughs> That was Dan. Daniel says, that was declared by President Gerbil on the news after he obligated to put uh, obligated to put ramps on every house. And Jared says, you're right, I just googled it. That probably explains the kerosene smell and the explosive combustion. This is a whole conversation. Yeah. Um, let's see, next. Maeve says, happy Valentine's Day. The reborn cactus pizza was great. I would also like to recommend the glory holes. They are some of the best of any pizza place. It's I've a, never been to a pizza place with a glory hole, have you? Uh, that's the only kind I go to. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I think we're going to the wrong pizza place. <laughs> the owner of this establishment kicked me out and said, oh, wait, we already read that one. Uh, this was a great place to go on Valentine's Day. The cactus pizza soup was excellent, and the waitress helped me realize I should break up with my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, you already read that one. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Um, <sighs> yeah, that's, a, that's, that's an awesome one. 
Thanks, Braden. I was considering buying my bringing my gal here tomorrow, but every time I order from this place, I specifically tell the employees to stop making the sentient pizzas on their grills. Every bite I take, the pizza just keeps screaming at me. John Connor says, I found out this place sells customer information to the Chinese government. I was abducted by them, and a cactus was forcefully inter- inserted into my anus. That's great. Thanks, John, for that. Braden says, I went to have lunch at this one, but they are on Mos- Moscow time. What? <laughs> Dan, I've ordered from this location a few days ago after he- hearing rave reviews from friends and family. I'd ordered over the phone. A gentleman cheerfully greeted with me. Thanks for calling the pizza. This is Chad. What do you want? I'd ordered a vegetarian pizza. Holy shit, this is long. It's really funny, though. Just go read it yourself, you guys. Where you at? Samuel says, Pizza Heaven's truly a heavenly place to be. The savory flavors, the cactus pizza, led my heart to Jesus Christ, my newfound Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for saving me from damnation to an eternal life in hell. If you visit, be sure to ask for the employee, Brad, who will gladly perform an exorcism to expel demons from your soul. Does pizza get 72 virgins when it goes to heaven? (laughs) Who said that? (laughs) Oh, I don't know. Sean? Was it Sean? Oh, no, it's John Connor again. So that's all I have for Saturday night's live show with me and Sunshine. And on that pizza heaven facebook page that we were mobbing there were a lot more comments but i just didn't end up reading them that night because there were so many of them and i just couldn't get through them all and today i looked on pizza heaven's website and all of the comments have been erased so apparently pizza heaven does not appreciate our brand of humor sorry about that pizza heaven and since so many people didn't answer i still have a big list of shoe customers here and i also have a list of ideas that i copied and pasted from the chat room saturday night so i'm gonna try one one last time to call up some of these shoe customers and see if any of them answer hello hi angela yes hi this is dave from the shoe store yes and uh, I just needed to let you know, uh, you, you picked up those shoes, right? The, the shoes that you special ordered? Yes, sir. And, and uh, you, forgot to, you, you forgot the instructions. So we're going to need you to come back and get the instruction manual. For a pair of shoes? Yeah, you left the instructions behind. I don't know if they fell out of the box, but I'm, I'm really sorry. Hello? <laughs> what the hell? She hangs up on me. Let's try her back one more time. Hi, Angela. Hello? Angela, you we got disconnected somehow. Hello? All right, I guess I'm done with Angela. Uh, by the way, that idea that they forgot the instruction manual, that was uh, submitted by someone in the chat room the other day when we did these. Uh, someone named Hazel. Thanks, Hazel, for that idea about the instruction manual. Hello? Hello, is Teresa available? Hold on just a minute. Okay. Hello? Hi, Teresa? Yes. Hi, this is Dave from the shoe store. Yes. And uh, I just needed to let you know about your shoes. Okay. And, uh, you picked those up, right? No, I did not. And, okay, yeah, that's why I'm calling, because uh, we, we received them in. They're ready to be picked up. But um, it turns out the laces, they've been recalled, because they're made of hemp. And they're, they're, they're being, made of hemp? Yeah, they're, they've got too high of THC content. Like you could suck on your shoelaces and you get high. Sure. Yeah. So, so we're having to we're we got to send them back and ask for the non hemp shoelaces. You know. Sure. Well, you go ahead and do that. Okay. Well, what what do you what's with the attitude? Why are you saying it like that? Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Holy crap! I just got air horned. Who does that? <laughs> okay, let me let me call them right back. Hi, we saw you missed your call. Please leave a message. All right, they're not answering, uh, but that was bizarre, and I'm kind of happy that I've had an air horn blown at me. That's a first, I think. I've had whistles blown at me, and I've been told to go take a running jump. I've been told to go pound salt. I've been called a retarded boy. But I've never had an air horn blown at me. So thank you, Teresa and her husband. Oh, and by the way, that was uh, Dan from the chat room. That was his idea the other day while I was doing these. He said the shoelaces were made of hemp and had a high THC content. Thanks for the idea, Dan. 
Hello. Hello, Yolanda? Uh, she's not in right now. Ah, balls. Okay, well, I'm calling from the shoe store. She ordered some shoes from us. Mm-hmm. Um, is, this the, is this the place they called at 2 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, we were trying to tell her about a problem with the shoes. At 2 a.m.? Yes, at 2 a.m., because we tried to call in the daytime and she didn't pick up. So we're just like, fuck so it, called- we'll, we'll, we'll call her at 2 a.m. No, you no. Do not call somebody's house at two a.m. That doesn't make sense. If they don't answer during the daytime, that means they may have been away. People are asleep at two a.m. Well, you don't know, call this house at two a.m. We, we have to do our we have to do our you job don't do here. Do your job by calling somebody's house at two a.m. Yes, we do. That's how we do it okay. here, motherfucker. Okay, well she's called Listen. corporate to complain. Oh yeah, so I'm right. Not listening. You yeah, right. Call, For if you have a problem, you wait policy. until the next business day. Listen and then here. It was a, what was that Saturday? You, you listen here. God damn it. Sunday, Sunday morning at 2 a.m.? You think that's okay? That's not okay. Hey, why don't People you, are sh- asleep at 2 a.m. You, you just shut the fuck up. What's your you're, name? You're, you're not even... Are you at the store right you're now? You're not even I Yolanda. know you're not at the store right now. I am too at the store. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, and I'll be up there shortly. No, no. I don't give you permission yes, to come here. Yes, I will be up you there shortly. You are not you coming up here. like you're crazy. I, I am just banning you from the store. At the store. Permaban. Forever. What? Hey, who's this? Hey, motherfucker. Oh, guy didn't want to talk to me at all. Let's try one more time, because I never got to tell her about the problem. And they just hung up, so I guess I'm done with that one. But at least that lady's running up to the mall to yell at the employees there for calling at 2 in the morning. That should be amusing. Hello? Hi, Shanika? Uh-huh. Hey, this is Brad from the shoe store. You ordered some shoes from us? Um, I think I canceled it. Yeah, um, this is- yeah, yeah, that's the one. I, and I, I thought I canceled it. Well, th- that's why I'm calling. Why'd you do that? Why'd you waste our time? I didn't waste your time. Technically, y'all wasted mine. It took two weeks to get it. Okay, well, with that kind of attitude, I'm glad we didn't sell you shoes. Well, you got one with me. Goodbye. I, I, I got what? Oh, I have an attitude with her. Okay, she wins. It is true. I kind of had an attitude there. Her call has been forwarded to an automatic Uh, voice message system. That's the last one. So I guess I'm done with the shoe customers for a while until I decide to do shoe customers again someday. Thank you once again, chat room, for all of the ideas that I stole from you. And I I almost want to just get some more shoe customer numbers so I can do the instruction manual prank properly and have them get super angry or confused with me. But whatever, I guess I'll just save it for next time. I want to be a technical writer Of clear and simple prose I want to write directions and manuals And create a thing of my own Hey Roy, I did my homework. Are you ready? Yes. Roy, Roy, you retarded boy, you prankster, you freaker, you fucker. You think that my truck in a stroke of bad luck and when I called, I got played for a sucker. Wow. Wow, even sound effects. That's amazing. Thank you, person from 609. Is that my favorite boy from 609 or is that someone else? I'm not sure. That's definitely my favorite poetry from 609, though. And hopefully there's more poetry on today's voicemails. Hey, long-time listener, first-time caller, Katie Baker here. How you doing? Holy shit. I want to thank you for using my artwork as the cover of the Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki episode of the Snowplow Show. Um, I don't have any poetry today, but I do have one impression God for damn you. it, Katie. Here it goes. <laughs> My impression of the sentient goo beneath the floorboard. The sentient Happy goo. Valentine's Thanks, Katie. Happy Valentine's Day to you and the phone losers of America. Bye. Thanks, Katie Baker. She's a longtime listener from Massachusetts and has sent several different uh, variations of the Snowplow Show artwork. And yeah, that was a really great impression, Katie. Dear Brad, hi. Hey, Corbin hi, guy. Brad. Dear Brad, oh, Morgan guy. You know, I normally I I, I don't like sports. Yeah. I really do not like sports. Fuck but, sports. But after tonight, uh, after tonight, tonight was phenomenal. Holy shit! Was it? Holy shit! Women's roller derby. Uh, oh my god! Oh, ho, ho, ho. I just got the hugest emotional boner in the world yeah, for emotional. anything that's like 
kind of sports related. You know, fuck basketball, fuck baseball, you know, fuck football, fuck all that. Women's roller derby. Eh, Holy shit. I've been to roller derby before. It was fun. I don't know if I'll ever go again, but it was amusing. Okay, I'm going to give you updates about this. Um, yeah, because... They we're remind me of Juggalos for some reason. Going to the championships. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. I'm drinking Bye. my beer. Hang up. My sports watching beer. Hang up. 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 There you go. You got it hung up, Corbin. Hey, Brad. It's your favorite boy from 609. Oh, shit. Um, I just want to let you know, like, I have Nelly Furtado, Turn Off the Lights, stuck in my head right now. Of course you I've do. Because I've been re-listening to, like, the old 2012 um, shows since I've been stuck inside doing projects inside because it's, like, 18 degrees out, and it sucks. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was zero yesterday. So, thanks for having that song stuck in my head. It's a great song Love to you. have stuck in your head. So, you're welcome. Hey, Brad. It's Brad. Hey, Brad. Today's Valentine's Day. I just wanted to call and tell you a Valentine's poem. Okay. It goes like this. Roses are red, violets are blue. 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. 42. That's a pretty great poem, but you get an F on your assignment because you stole that from someone. I've seen that on the internet before. You can't pull one over on me, goddammit. Oh, gerbil. Oh, gerbil. Oh, why? Oh, why? The sound of the phone brings a tear to my eye. Aww. Trapped deep in the tunnels under my office, I must enter your unit and survey the losses. Oh, gerbil, oh, gerbil, this is being recorded. You've changed all the locks, and your windows, they're boarded. Any treasure you find, it belongs to me. It's right. called mineral rights. That's a real thing, actually. Oh, gerbil, oh, gerbil, I'm through with your crap. I'm a paralegal, so suck on that. I'm hanging up now, this call is insane. You need a brain surgeon to surgeon your brain. That was beautiful and very emotional and stuff. Thank you, person who sent that in. Oh, and by the way, Google Translate, it does not see the word gerbil anywhere in that. On the first part, it says, oh, terrible, oh, curable, oh, why, oh, why. And then on the second one, it says, oh, durable, durable. And then on the third one, it says, oh, terrible, terrible. I'm through with your craps. So Google Voice translation on this one completely failed. But you didn't. That was a nice poem. Thank you. Hey, Brad, this is your old homework assignment. You wanted a poem, so here you go. Woo-hoo. Brad, oh Brad, your show is rad. You are a scheming prankster, lad. The pranks are fun, it's easy to tell that you're the worst tenant from hell. Cars get dinged by Skippy and Dippy. The tracks you play get mighty trippy. The 80s phone hacks come in handy when you're calling kids from your van to hand out candy. Hi, Brad! That was nice. Very beautiful. You can't go wrong when you bring child kidnapping into your assignment. So I give you an A-plus on your homework assignment. Oh, hey, Brad. How you doing? It's Pete. I'm just calling to complete my homework assignment. Here's my poem. It's called Roy, New Mexico. A quiet town in New Mexico. If ever you have a chance to go, there you will see cacti on the highway side of the road. Is erasing, shaken like four local in a cup, thrown from the window of Andy Anderson's late model vehicle. So I drive real slow, past all the dead lawns and partially completed roof repairs, to find that for which my heart it yearns. Next to dear old Mildred Monday's house, a beautiful lady named Kay I see. Her cheerfulness is like a cactus. I spent a night with this honey baby. And now it burns when I pee. Thanks, Brad. I love you, honey, baby. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thanks, uh, you too, and, you know, A-plus and all that stuff. Everyone gets an A-plus today. This is a Shakespearean sonnet. Great. There are a few things that I like more 
than a full bottle of Kentucky Supreme, and the phone show on Party 93.4 playing in my ears off the phone machine. Now, Snugworks gets laid on a regular basis, and grouchy old man settled out with the court, buy all the collars from all the places, and Spessa and Linear and Murdoch and more. My parents disowned me for breaking the toaster and ripping the roof off the family home. They tore down my red box and the Chili Peppers poster for pranking the bank till they canceled our loans. Now I have nothing left to say, but Cactus, Cactus, D.L.A. That's the best. Hey, Brad, it's I Poke Smart. Here's my poem. Roy, a Roy, a Roy, 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 Cactus, 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 Cactus. Sorry, I'm fucking lazy. Bye. I thought it was great. A plus, plus, plus. And your ID is, it's in the mail. It's on the way. Maybe. Not really, actually. God damn it, Roy. It's the guy from California. I haven't called you in a while, but um, I'm going to do some homework here. I'm going to spit some bars, but they're not going to be about you. So, yeah, here we go. What? Venice the Menace. Welcome to Venice. They call me Dr. Dre's Apprentice. There. You're welcome. Now, I will be expecting my check. That was you bullshit. Send it to, uh, you know, the Reno police station. It would be amazing. All right. Bye, Roy. It's bullshit. There's nothing about PLA in that. I'm giving you an F, motherfucker. What is a cactus? Who? Is a cactus. Is it night? Is it day? Could it be that I am gay? No! It can't be. Well, the cactus knows that deep down, I think of clowns. Clowns of brown. Shall I sing? Shall I dance? Shall I go to the store? Is the cactus watching? Do I smell? Manure? No, 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 I don't. Or is it that war that I taught a boy is an A plus choice? Cactus. 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 <laughs> yeah, nice try working the word A plus into your poem, trying to do some subliminal tricks on me or something. I'm giving you a C, a C minus for your shitty phone quality. Your shitty phone quality and trying to trick me. It's what you get. Hey, what's going on, Roy? Um, hey there. I was listening to the show right now, and uh, you're mentioning Carrot Top a lot. Um, I, I think do. there's a call that you had to a lady and her mother on a cruise line a few years ago, and she totally didn't fall for it, but it was like the Roy comedy hour, and you had her cracking up so crazy. That was like one of my favorite calls. Um, maybe you would uh, do your new listeners some justice by... Uh, digging that call up and playing it. That'd be awesome. What a great idea. In fact, that'll get me out of playing the rest of these poetry assignments, and it'll keep me from having to do any more, uh, you know, brand new pranks. I can just play old shit for the rest of the show, and the show can be over, because I'm pretty sure that's a, kind of a long prank, like 10 or 15 minutes. And I don't think there's any carrot top in that prank. It's basically the same thing. There's Polly Shore, you know, just some weird guy from the 90s, but I don't think there's any Carrot Top, or maybe there's a small mention of him. I don't know. All I know is I like that prank too, and I know I've replayed it on the show before, but I don't care. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to play it right now, and then the show is basically going to be over, because everyone needs to hear this lady and her mother just be completely amused with me and not fall for the prank at all. So here it is. Here's where I tell some lady that's about to go on a long cruise that her room's been taken over by somebody. Hello? Hi, is this Linda? Yes. Hi, this is David from the Carnival Cruise Line. Yes. And uh, you you uh, you called today uh, to book the an extra ticket on your seven days to the Magic Western Caribbean. Yes. Okay, great. And um, it looks like there's a small problem with your room. Like you were on the TBA and the room for your daughter. I don't know what TBA is. Oh, to be announced, like because um, we didn't have any rooms available. But but we should have one available. Is the thing. Hmm. They didn't explain that. Yeah, yeah. Um oh no, yeah, no, it's okay. You you're all you all have rooms. It's just the problem is that okay. <laughs> we we had a celebrity um uh that needed a room. Uh his yes. his name's Polly Shore. Do you know Polly Shore? He's an actor. Yes. He's a um Emmy actor from the 90s. Yes, I remember him. Okay, yeah, yeah. He he um he's taking your room. Yeah, he's going to be Who the hell is this? Uh my name is Br- really, it's- 
joking with me? Is this a joke? No, no, no ma'am. No, I wouldn't joke. Oh, okay, I thought this was my friend joking with me. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I'm actually I calling... I thought this was Justin. Oh, okay. no, no, no. My name is Brad. I'm calling from the Carnival Cruise Lines. Okay, okay. And um, it's just uh, Polly Shore, He's he always gets the room that we had booked for you, and he's a celebrity, uh-huh. so we're going to be uh, letting him have the room instead. And you're gonna have to go down one level. You'll be in in the sub sub levels, like down by the boiler room, for your three tickets. It's gonna be th- all three of you are gonna share one room, and there's gonna be two beds. Well, this doesn't sound. This doesn't sound acceptable. <laughs> what do you mean it's unacceptable? <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't sound at all acceptable. Well, it's on the section eight level. That's not like section nine. It's section eight. So, so it's. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You know who Pauly Shore is, right? He's the star of Biodome. Oh, absolutely. He's fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah made me laugh. Really, yeah. really love it. Yeah, he he won an Emmy I, for I Biodome. Under the, I let him sleep in the room with me under the bed. <laughs> oh, no, I don't, think, I don't think he'll do that. No, he's a very private person in real life. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, um, you're going to be next to the boiler room, like two levels down. On level nine, because uh, Polly, he has a lot of women come to his room. Oh yeah, I would imagine. So yeah, <laughs> he's kind of like a Hollywood playboy type guy. So you don't want. I mean, yeah, because he's he's really dead sexy. So oh yeah, you gotta. I agree. Yeah, he's yeah. That's what all the ladies around here say. So yeah. So um yeah, basically, you you don't want him in your room because then you'd have to listen to that. Hmm. Well, but it wouldn't be in his room. It would be in my room. Do you really want to hear, listen to Polly Shore have sex all night? <laughs> you know, I, I don't mean to be. Cr- no one, no one has ever asked me that. I have to admit, no one has ever asked me that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter actually, because you know he doesn't want you in his room. He wants. He likes his <laughs> okay. sex in private. Okay. Well, then uh, he would just need to pay me to be agreeable. No, we're going to have to ask you to pay a little bit extra because you're going to be down by the boiler room. <laughs> okay. Well, see, yeah, that's re- that's it, that's precisely what won't oh, work. This is hopeless. Yeah, it's, it pretty <laughs> much is. It, it pretty much is. I, I love your demeanor. I like you're, you're such a nice lady. <laughs> you're not even ang- like usually when I do this, I get yelled at. Yeah. Well, no, not me. I'm really. A happy person. I'm thrilled to be alive and to enjoy every day on this earth. Are you thrilled to be uh, in the boiler room? That's going to be really hard to sleep in. But I will not be going to the boiler room. No, I mean, that's all we have left. Well, that's okay. It'll be unfortunate that someone will have to move. Yeah, we had a reservation already for two people, but when you added your daughter onto the account, then we had to take you off of it because there's two beds in there. Okay. Hmm. Well, it's unfortunate. I'm sure you guys will figure out something else. Oh, we've already figured it out. You're going to be in the boiler room. I appreciate you calling me to offer me an opportunity to be generous, but no. And we're going to have to have you uh, shovel coal into the furnaces to make the (laughs) ship. Okay, okay, that is the last straw. Why is that so bad? (laughs) Yeah, because that would be basically like the opposite of what I would be wanting to do. When it comes to going on a cruise, it's well, like it's not for the whole day. It's just like a half a shift, just four hours. Okay, four or five hours. Well, maybe I should try to warm up to the idea. You know, yeah, you maybe not being a little too close-minded. Polly is also you really. You can be honest. Polly Shore has also reserved your life jacket. So, in in the case, <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, in then the case, he can just uh, you know. Well, then I know what I have to do. I just have to um, take care of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you do anal? <laughs> when I have to, yeah. Okay, great. What about your daughter? Chirp, chirp, crickets, crickets. <laughs> that, whoa, that just, that, that caused a hang-up. I said the wrong thing there. All right, let's quickly call the daughter. <laughs> Oh, that lady was so nice. Like, there's nothing I could do to her. There's nothing I could say. So thanks, whoever told me Polly Shore. Okay. Okay, I'll come in here. I'll come in here. Like, 
We are open, man. Yeah, on Monday we have open night, and that's when Angel will be here, so it's probably that's something to check it out. Okay. Hello? Oh, hello. This is Roy from the Carnival Cruise Lines. Yes. Did, did, did I, I, I was supposed to talk to a female, as I was talking to the daughter of Linda. Yeah, yeah, do you want to speak to her right now? Oh yeah, that'd be great, thank you. Okay, here you go. Oh. Hello? Hi, this, this, hi, I'm calling from the Carnival Cruise Lines, your your mother called okay. earlier to add a ticket. Yeah. And um, it looks like we don't have an extra, like, um, we don't have a room next to theirs. You're going to have to have a, okay. a room in a different part of the ship. Okay. Yep, you're going to be in the boiler room. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. You're but... just like your mother. You just <laughs> giggle all the time. <laughs> in the boiler room. Yeah, the boiler room. <laughs> but what, ha- what happens there? Uh, that, that's where your room is. That's where, like, the help uh, stays, typically. <laughs> and we're going to have to have you, like, shovel... Co- co- <laughs> you're going to... You're going you're gonna to be shoveling coal into the furnace. Oh, my God! What a good dream! <laughs> Why does I'm, like... Make sure my, like... like my bicep are good, so I can, like, turn some levers and... Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to pull big rough. levers and shovel coal. That sounds rough. Wow. Yeah. So I'm free, then, because I'll be working. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, just four, hour, four or five hours a day. <laughs> Why is this so funny to you? <laughs> How high are you right now? When someone called you and told you that you'd be in the boiler room, I mean, you, it's pretty funny. Yeah, well, we, we okay. Had, we had a room for you, but uh, the celebrity is taking it. We have to give them oh. first choice on the rooms, even really? though, even though you were there first. Wow, well, that doesn't seem fair. So yeah, yeah, it sucks, but they're celebrities. What wow. can you do? What Just because they're like in a certain pay grade. Yeah, That's pretty, pretty much. Rough. Well, it's just they have a lot of pull because they're, you know, it's like a Hollywood actor. <laughs> and it's Polly Shore. <laughs> oh, okay, well, so what do I need to do? Award winning <laughs> actor of Biodome. <laughs> and Room Taker. This oh, yeah, deal. Room Let's Taker. Add that. Let's add that too. Room usurper extraordinaire. Yeah, and the courtroom. Remember the courtroom drama he was in. <laughs> and then that that hilarious. Riveting. Call. Riveting. Yeah, yeah that I was. Mean, really. He won three Emmys. Woo. Emmys for that, and then the college one. Remember he went to college. <laughs> So we're downgrading your ticket to Coal Slave. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I can earn my keep. I can do pretty good. I good, think. good. You know? Yeah. I might mean, not be the strongest, but, I mean, I sure have a lot of spunk. Hey, remember so. when Polly Shore went, <laughs> went into the hospital? <laughs> Remember when he went in the army? In the army now. <laughs> <laughs> oh I hope I get to meet you. This is awesome. Oh no, you won't meet me. I'm just in the reservation department. I won't. I won't, you know? But I just said I have to say extend that. I wish I would. But you are you one on the ship. You're gonna be one floor below Polly Shore, so you can like bang on the ceiling with, <laughs> with a broom. Like bang on the ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and like, cause he's gonna, he's gonna be banging. Maybe mo- give him some new material. He'll he'll be banging models for all all seven days. Oh my God. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm not trying to be crazy. I'm just saying, you know. Oh my goodness. 
So when when you're when you're laying in your bed and you can hear him up there banging models, just re- remember the movie Son in Law as, as he's banging. <laughs> Okay. Okay, great. All right, I'm back. Well, okay, I'm back. I just wanted to get all that settled. I've already talked to your mother, and she's fine with it. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I, I, the whole time, I thought she cared. Uh, That's hey, all right. Hey, do your cell okay. phone, does your cell phone work on a cruise? Or does it just depend I on... Huh. I don't know. I've never been on one. Okay. This is my first one. This is my first time as a coal slave. First time on a cruise <laughs> ship. I mean, it's a whole lot of new. Has your mother been on cruises yeah. before? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. so she would know. No, I was just curious. I've never been on a cruise. I just work in the call center. <laughs> uh, can I ask you a question? What was your favorite part of Biodome? <laughs> Is there a favorite part? When it ended. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, so what's your what's your name? <laughs> My name is Rebecca Gixever. Oh, okay. Your mom didn't even tell me your name. She's such an idiot. Oh, wow. I know. Yeah, all this care. Just to the wind. To yeah. The wind. <laughs> well, it's been great talking to you. I'm glad you're so good. You're okay with this. <laughs> what choice do I have? Yeah, really. I mean, <laughs> it's just four hours a day that you got to shovel coal. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you for for just, like, (laughs) laughing hysterically at me for ten minutes straight. Oh. Oh, man. Well, okay. (laughs) Okay, well, I hope you have a good cruise. Like, where does it go to? (laughs) Okay. I'll do my best. Okay, yeah, yeah. Enjoy the Caribbean. Will there, will, there, will there be some sort of performance review when I'm when I'm done? When oh, I yeah. I mean, you can just call on Yelp or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or Google reviews or... There's a comment card okay. ne- next to your bed. But they, okay. don't, they don't get used it'll as be, much. It'll probably be pretty sooty, so I don't know how well that'll work, but I'll try. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, hey, I-, I hope you don't get, like, uh, you know, taken by the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, my gosh. You're going to bring that up right now? Yeah, yeah. After all of this? Well, you know, it happens on uh, 35% of our cruises is people get You're sucked. You're just a bastion and bulwark of joy and happiness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, I just wanted to, like, wow. full, full disclosure, you could... <laughs> <laughs> you could get sucked into the Bermuda Triangle. I could. And and never come oh. home. Ever. Wow. Ever again. This is so good. This is so good. Yep. Well, I'm glad all this happened. This is nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, enjoy your cruise. Okay, will do. All right. <laughs> if if you don't get sucked in the Bermuda Triangle, I'll call you back for a customer survey. <laughs> okay, Next week. thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay Bye. <laughs> There you have it. That's the Polly Shore cruise thing, which Polly Shore actually listened to, and he claims to have LOL'd at on Twitter because uh, you know I posted it on Twitter and he retweeted it. He retweeted phone losers. The star of Biodome himself loved that prank, and hopefully you guys did too. I think it is about time to end the show. It looks like I've been doing this for over an hour now, actually longer because I started the show yesterday. On Monday, and it's now Tuesday, and I'm still not finished with this stupid thing. So I'm done. Thanks, all of you, for listening. Uh, thanks, everyone, for sending the poetry in. Uh, I think there's some more in the voicemails just kind of scattered around. I'm sure I'll get to them on the next show. But we can probably, uh, I guess, say that the homework assignment is officially done, the poetry homework assignment, which means I need to come up with another homework assignment. Maybe I can trick you guys into designing PLA Snowplow Show logos next time or something. I don't know. We'll think of something on the next show, hopefully. Thanks once again to Utah Kurt for sponsoring today's show. 
It is Utah Kurt's fault that there was only maybe 30 minutes of actual new material in this show, and the rest of it's just old stuff and poetry. If you have a problem with that, you should go to the show notes where I've posted Utah Kurt's email address and home phone number, and you can get in touch with him and yell at him about today's show. I know I'm going to once I'm finished up with this. If you'd like to be a sponsor of the Snowplow Show, you can do it one of two different ways, or both if you want. You can go to phonelosers.com slash cactus and sign up directly on the website, or you can go to patreon.com slash phonelosers and sign up there, and that helps support the show and hopefully make more shows happen, which I've been completely failing at lately. But that's the plan, anyway. Be sure to follow Phone Losers at facebook.com slash phone losers, twitter.com slash phone losers, youtube.com slash phone losers of America. And if you don't listen to the shows on the YouTubes, then you might want to add that account to your YouTube subscriptions, because that's where I've been doing live shows lately. I've been doing them at youtube.com slash phone losers shows. And hopefully at some point this week, I can try and do another live show. We're going to end today's show with a brand new song written by El Hombre, or El Hombre, sorry, I'm bad at pronouncing things. Uh, He's written a song about prank calling, and it's called Ten Digits Later. And El Hombre says in the email to me, it says, I really dig your show. It helps me get through the long days. To show my appreciation, I made a song for you, and it's called Ten Digits Later. Maybe you can play it on the Snowplow Show sometime. Keep up the great work. Your prank calls are awesome. And I love you, honey baby. So thanks, El Hombre. And here's your song. Thanks a lot for making this. This is awesome. Whoa. Holy crap. 